1969, an oil tanker hit the rocks near the town of West Falmouth, Massachusetts, spilling almost 200,000 gallons of fuel oil off the coast of Cape Cod. And the wind would push the oil up in the direction of West Falmouth Harbor and up toward Wild Harbor, where it was pushed into the marshes. Four decades later, oil still lingers in the nearby marshes. It's a rock. Yep, and you can still smell diesel. Although tiny compared to the disaster in the Gulf of Mexico, the West Falmouth spill is one of the most closely studied in history because it occurred only a few miles from the world-renowned Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution. This is one of the few places in the world now where we have a long-term study of the effect of the oil. As a result, scientists there have been tracking the oil's effect on this stretch of coastline since 1969. One major lesson they have learned that applies to the Deepwater Horizon disaster, keep the oil out of coastal marshes. You do not want oil into this type of what we call a low energy environment, as opposed to the crashing waves on a rocky coast. And, and this is the reason why they wanted to get all the booms out there and keep the oil from going into these types of environments. Because the oil gets in here, the marsh sediments, they're like a sponge, and they keep the oil in there. The oil was, would go out, the oil would come back in. The oil would go out, the oil would come back in. It was cycling with the tides. That's the way you can kill anything. Here in Wild Harbor, when oil got into the marshes, it killed off the hardy grasses that serve as the foundation for the local ecosystem. Birds abandoned the area, and the shellfish population collapsed. And they died en masse. And the ones that didn't die actually so that survived the oil, they froze because they couldn't bury deeply into the sediments that winter, and they froze in place. Soon after the spill, the marsh did appear to recover, but scientists say appearances don't tell the whole story. Within a month or two, the visible presence of the oil is gone. Within a year or two, the, the marsh comes back. Basically, we're back to where we were prior to the West Falmouth oil spill in the sense of the old view of oil pollution, which was out of sight, out of mind. And what the West Falmouth oil spill study showed unequivocally is that's not correct, that the oil persists in the marsh, it persists in the subtitle mud. Shellfish harvesting in the area has been banned for over 40 years because of the lingering oil, and a more recent problem of septic tank overflow caused by overdevelopment. Local authorities here have determined the shellfish is unsafe to eat. On the Gulf Coast, where seafood is a backbone of the local economy, a four-decade-long shellfish ban would be ruinous. So this little area that we're talking about here could be multiplied by a hundred or a thousand times in the Gulf. And if that's the case, it's not good news for the people who are trying to make use of that ecosystem. Oil is biodegradable. It's made up of hundreds, sometimes thousands of organic chemicals, which can be broken down by bacteria naturally occurring in the environment. Scientists in Louisiana note that the ecosystem there is actually better equipped to break down the oil than at West Falmouth, or other past disasters. One of the things we have on our side in Louisiana is nature. It's a very warm, productive environment. Natural remediation in Louisiana is going to happen a whole lot faster. There's plenty of microbes, there's plenty of nutrients, and there's plenty of biological activity going on. That's going to be really different from it, what it was like in the Exxon Valdez, a much colder environment, not as biologically productive. But for reasons that are not completely understood, some components of the oil in the Wild Harbor Marsh resist biodegradation and remain in the marsh for decades, affecting the ecosystem in unexpected ways. The fiddler crabs in here burrow down, they hit the oil, they go sideways. Fiddler crab burrows help oxygenate the soil for marsh grasses. Scientists taking plaster castings of those burrows have demonstrated that the crabs actually tunnel in a different direction to avoid the oil buried in the sediment. But what's more worrisome is the possible impact on human health. 
Some degraded oil has been shown to contain protocarcinogens, molecules which have been linked to cancer. So that was all dead along in here. Yeah. Scientists caution that because each source of oil has a different chemical makeup and each ecosystem is unique, it is difficult to use one oil spill to predict what will happen in another. But the sheer quantity of oil that is spewed into the Gulf of Mexico makes the long-term prognosis there bleak. And nature will recover after a period of time. But here we're talking about 30 years. There's still some impact. It, it, you know, you just don't live that long. We don't live that long. Yeah. Nature goes on.